What's up, Wolfpack Nation? We are back yet again with another episode of Locked on Wolfpack. We have a lot to discuss in the world of Wolfpack baseball. We've had some struggles. We came out with a good victory on Tuesday night against our crosstown rival in ECU. But we're going to break down what this win means moving forward and what to expect as we shape getting toward the ACC tournament here with a lot still on our plate that we're going to have to get cleaned up. Kenton, are you ready? I'm absolutely ready. I'm excited. I'm fired up. I'm going to tell you, midweekers like this one always get me excited. Let's do it. Well, stay tuned. we got a good show for you. We're going to break down the Pac-9 on today's episode of Locked on Wolfpack. You are locked on NC State. Your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. All right. Welcome back in, everybody. If you could be so kind to give us a like and maybe even mash that subscribe button on your way in the door. We're continuing to grow this show, uh, as you might have seen on Twitter and the amount of episodes we've been pumping out with the the large amount of basketball content we've had been going on. But we're going to try and be more interactive, have more things for the people to interact with. So feel free to connect with us. You know, we've been talking about dropping some comments. We had a lot of comments on our last episode uh, when we asked the question on who is the last pass first point guard in the system. We had a lot of good responses on there. So absolutely be uh, be involved. We want to hear you guys. We want to see you guys. So mash that subscribe button, toss us like, toss some comments. We want to interact with you as much as we can. So starting off today's show, um, Kenton, this is something you and I just discussed on something we want to implement moving forward. Um, we're both Scott Van Pelt guys from ESPN and something he does that I really admire on his show is the best thing he saw on XYZ day. So we're going to start doing that. We just did that our, in our last episode when we had to shout out the women's tennis team for winning the ACC championship. We're going to start doing that moving forward. So here we go again. The best thing I saw on Tuesday, April the 25th was Isaiah Moore snapping the hurricane siren as uh, we had multiple uh, Wolfpack football players at the game. I think we had four of them all total. We had both Thomas brothers, Isaiah Mm -hmm. Moore and Christopher Dunn was there as well. But uh, Isaiah Moore ruined the fun for everyone. I guess he broke the siren. NC state football tweeted this video uh, of the siren ceasing to exist after Isaiah was done with it. Uh, Very funny. I think it's cool to see, uh, you know, the NC State athletes being involved in such a manner. They're being kind of rolled out as the celebratory get going mascot for the Hurricanes as they're in the playoffs. But uh, something that funny, also funny that came from this is once Isaiah, the, the video had hit the Internet that he had broken the siren. Pac football had tagged the strength and conditioning coach, uh, obviously Coach Thunder, on that he was going to have to foot the bill because of how uh, ridiculously strong Isaiah Moore has become. Well, Coach Thunder says, I don't think so. That's on you, big dog. Yeah. I ain't fronting that yeah. ball. So this was very funny. Kenton, as a former defensive lineman, you have plenty of experiences with Coach Thunder. Does this fit his personality? Oh, 100%. 100%. I don't care if you made Thunder a billionaire. That man is, is frugal to the core. He is not going to play around and be out here wasting money. Uh, and uh, if you broke that, if you broke the siren, you buy the siren and uh, Thunder ain't buying it for you. So, yeah, it fits. It tracks. It a thousand percent tracks with uh, with Thunder. But uh, I'm, I'm sure that as packed as the house was um, on this here Tuesday night, the Hurricanes will find the money to replace it. They'll 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 find the ability to replace that uh, siren uh, in no time. Yeah. No surprise to see. uh if, if the siren were to get broken, it's more than likely going to be by an NC State football player. So very funny. I thought that was the best thing we saw here on Tuesday. Um, I guess the second best thing we saw here on Tuesday was that the Pac-9 were able to pull out a very tight win against the 12th ranked Pirates of ECU. Uh, at the Doak, it was in Raleigh this time. Uh, we, we had our you-know-what's handed to us when we saw them Cross town in Greenville uh, about a month ago, but we were able to pull out the win here on Tuesday against ECU. 
this is a big win. Uh, it is a midweek win, and in terms of, I guess, priority, it falls secondary to the ACC schedule. But because we've been struggling in the ACC schedule, this is a big win. And because of ECU being ranked as high as they are, this helps our strength of schedule. It's going to help our resume when it comes time for, I guess, judgment day after all the conference tournaments take place. But it was good to get one back from ECU. Uh, we, we beat them by a score of 5-4. As I mentioned, it was a very close game probably a lot closer than it should have been uh, being that we had a five run lead. Uh, I believe that was in the bottom of the third. I want to make sure I have all my slides in order. Yes. So first slide, I live tweeted the game. So I'm just going to be sharing some of my thoughts. It's, it's probably best to organize them this way as I work through this, but we built a five run lead in the bottom of the third inning. And it was highlighted by this play. And I'm going to set the scene for you because it's not all that descriptive. So what we had here, we had a runner on first and we had a runner on third with two outs. Now, a, a very common baseball base running play that they teach from a young age to try and legitimately steal a run is you're going to have your runner fake like he's stealing second and he's going to get in a rundown on purpose. And the goal of this is to distract whoever has the ball at that moment. More often than not, it is the shortstop. You want to distract them just long enough that your runner on third can dart home before the third out is made. Because when this happens, that run counts regardless of the third out being recorded. This is for new baseball fans. I'm sure many of you do understand this. I'm not trying to speak down to you, but that's, that is the rule here. So I thought this was extremely key because this was the fifth run that we scored. And as I previously mentioned seconds ago, we won by a score of five to four. So directly, but indirectly, this turned out to be the game winning run. Absolutely. And we needed all five of them because we've had some bullpen struggles. It was something uh, many of us were nervous about as this game progressed on, uh, but we were able to pull it out. And I'm speaking a lot. So Kenton, I'm going to let you take the wheel for a couple minutes here. I, but, I just want to say that didn't didn't Hotfield come in as the starter in this game? It is, and that that perfect transition transition to my next slide here. So Sam Highfield did get the start, and this was his first start in over a year because he has not started a game this season. Um, this has been a lot of points of contention, even for myself, because yeah. for much of this season I had been sort of advocating that I think Highfield should be in a starting position. Um, because for two, up until this point, he has been a kind of a main feature of the bullpen. Me personally, I think you get the most value from Sam Highfield when he is a starting pitcher. Um, so I thought this was kind of fascinating that we're getting this now, I guess, at this point in the season. Um, we've had some struggles with the starting pitching. Ultimately, I think the starting pitching has been very effective, especially recently. Um, so much so that I don't think you can tinker with the weekend rotation now. I think you got to roll with what you got. But we see Sam Highfill and possibly a spot start in perhaps the biggest mid midweek game of the season, and especially so because we needed to get this win. Yeah. And I mentioned it was so good to see Sam Highfill not just start a game, but he was more than down. He was more than down early, boy. It was he whew. was they were he struggling. was. He had ECU off balance, and I think a lot of people get kind of clouded in the fact that ECU is really good at baseball. Don't be deceived in the you know kind of the idea that you know ECU's little brother. We should beat them in everything. This, that, and the other. I get it, but ECU baseball that is their baby. That is their main. And, sport that brings in the success for that school and not and, only that let's let's be realistic for a second and sorry to cut you off here but let's no, be realistic for I, a second. i've been speaking way too much so please it's it's not realistic to always expect or even if you do expect to win every time you should not expect for your opponent in-state opponent to be bad every single time that y'all play you know what i mean somebody commented under our post saying light it up we shouldn't light it up if we beat ecu this should happen every time it doesn't matter whether or not we should be DCU every time. 
if they're a great team and we walk in and beat them, even if we're just the great her team, you should still be lighting it up. I mean, let's just say that all of our wildest dreams come true for Wolfpack sports, right? And and we become the top dogs in the conference in, in all of the sports, right? Are we still not going to light it red when we win the textile bowl against Clemson? Are we still not going to light it red if we whoop the wheels off a, a five and five and six um, uh, school in the boys in baby blue? If we if they're five and six, we stop them from getting a bowl game and we continue an undefeated season. Will we not light it up? It's Every not time. about them. It's about us. It's not right. about put pumping them up and saying, hey, we beat a team that's really good. So we're going to light it up. It's about us saying we're celebrating a great thing that we did, which this win was. Well, yes. I mean, while I do think we should light it up for each and every win, this was a big win. This was a big, much needed win over a very good ECU team. But yeah, so it was it was very good to see Sam Highfield thrive. He had ECU off balance. And, you know, even though he only threw for four innings, and I think that was by design probably to keep him, you know, somewhat serviceable if he weekend. is in need yeah, this gotcha. weekend. Mm-hmm. We're going to get to who we play this weekend and the remaining schedule. Hopefully we won't need Sam this weekend, but I understand wanting to save at least some some arm strength for this weekend if necessary. But it was great to see him out there, and it was it was much needed in that game because we took the early momentum in scoring those five runs early on. And so him dominating and keeping ECU to nothing, it helped us create just enough offense that ended up making the difference in the end i'm rambling a lot so we're going to take a quick break and get to our ads so uh stick with us we're going to break down what actually happened in the ecu game and then we're going to talk about why it's significant and their remaining schedule for the rest of the acc play stick with us we'll be right back all right and so we got to break down this ecu game so, as I mentioned, we scored five early runs. Sam Highfield was shutting them down up until the fourth inning. Then we brought in relief. I believe after that it was Rio Britton. He has struggled a bit in pieces this year. I kind of had maybe too high of expectations for Rio out of the bullpen. He did okay tonight. He did okay. ECU was able to create a little bit off of him. I believe they scored two or three to kind of close the gap into a 5-2 ball game. And then you kind of felt the walls continually close a little bit more as the game went on. And I'd be lying to you if I didn't say I was getting a little bit apprehensive on how it was all going to play out. Because it's happened too many times this season where we have a lead, we get stagnant in the offense, and the bullpen can only really – hold off the the opposing attack for so long. And I it kind of looked like that was where this one was heading uh, until it didn't. I thought we got a tremendous um, outing from P.J. Labriola. This came in the later innings. It was in the seventh and then into the eighth. Um, and he was big time. He was big time. He We really needed him to step up and produce because he's another guy – Transfer coming from Clemson, I kind of maybe pumped myself up too much with the expectations of him, but he came through tonight. I think it was his best outing, especially in relief. And he, in in the moment where you thought ECU was going to take the game over, Labriel was able to quiet them and kind of settle things back out, at least for a moment. Um, he He did relinquish a single, I believe it was in the eighth with two outs, And that is when Carson Kelly entered and closed out the rest of the eighth inning. But we were kind of searching around for some sort of offense. It never really came. And so we had to rely on the bullpen to just take us the rest of the way. And I shouted out PJ Labriola. So I need to give equal love to Carson Kelly because he came in and he got it done in the the last out of the eighth and then continued on throughout the ninth to close the door. And I've said this 37 times already in this episode. It's a big win. It's a humongous win for resume, for momentum, which we're going to get into in just a second, but tremendous win. Kenton, what did you think about knocking off the Pirates on Tuesday? What was that pitch that Labriola threw that it was was like 
well off the plate, and he got a guy to chase it. It was down in the way. Right, slider. Oh, man, that slider was nasty. It was He's filthy. got a good sweeping slider. He gets a lot of oh. horizontal movement when he locates it well, oh. but it was gross. The movement on that pitch, I, I, you look at it, and I granted, I'm not a baseball player, so so you tell me. But I looked at that pitch, and I'm like, oh, I knew I would have been fooled. I would have went ahead and walked back to the dugout. I would have gone ahead, threw that bat over my shoulder, and, hey, he got me, coach, because that that slider was filthy, man. That's that's the type of stuff you only see on MLB the show. But with that being said, um, you know it's a it's a it's a great one. It's a great win. Um, and like you said, momentum sake is important. But also, I'm just gonna be honest. Momentum ain't as important as that resume. When you talk about tournament time, when you talk about well, you know, it, it's not the same as basketball, and they don't have the same quad one, quad two, quad three, quad four type deal. But there is the RPI separators. And so this is very clearly a, a RPI one type type deal here, right? It is. Yes, it, it's it, it, yeah, it doesn't exactly work out the same like basketball. You have the quadrants, but right. if it translated directly, this is a quad one win. It absolutely is. Exactly. And so that's a win like this is is the type of stuff that you need on that resume. When it comes down to the end of the season, and you're saying, why should they get in the tournament? If you don't win the ACC championship, which, by the way, is still an option, friends. If y'all wanted to do that, hey, we wouldn't be bad at you, Coach Avon. If you wanted, to, if this was the year, you know what I mean? Like, hey, they say the twenty eighth tries the the best, or twenty seventh tries the. What is this? Twenty eighth? Is this twenty eighth? This is his twenty seventh season. So it, yeah, they say that. Hey, they say that the uh, the twenty seventh times a charm. So you know, get us one. But anyway. If you if you don't win the ACC tournament, looking at it and saying like, "Hey, this is a type of moment where you can have something impressive on your resume," to say, "Hey, voters, this is what we did. Hey, committee, this is what we did. Look at what we did against the best. We're not saying that we need to host, but we darn sure need to be in because look at what we did against the best. This game is very important towards that end." Amongst all my blabbering, I realize I blew through the stop signs for our, our live ad read, so I'm going to go ahead and fit that in now. And then after I do this, we're going to wrap up um, kind of what we're looking at these next couple weeks for the Pac-9 and why it has to be legitimately now or never uh, with our struggles recently. Absolutely. But we're going to be talking about building the rest of the season. So I'm going to be talking to you now about Built Bar. That was a horrible transition, but work with me, people. If you're looking for a delicious snack and you don't want all the sugar and calories – you need to be looking at the best tasting protein bar ever. That's built. You got to try this. If you're like me and you want to make healthier snack choices, but you don't want to compromise on taste, I've got just the thing for you. This is built bars and built puffs. The built bars are healthy and they taste incredible. They seriously do because I've tried them. They taste amazing and so amazing that you won't even think they are good for you. But what makes them so good? Well, for starters, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right real chocolate and they come in unbelievable flavors like churro peanut butter brownie and even cookies and cream you don't need to wait for a box for years we've been talking about ordering it online but you can get it from your local walmart or sam's club while they still have these specialty flavors over at built.com so head to your nearest walmart or sam's club to grab yourself a box of built bars you can pick up a four bar box and cookies and cream double bar or coconut puff if you're close to Sam's Club, run on, run in and get you a 13-bar box so you don't have to make as many trips. And you can do, you can enjoy these crazy flavors like brownie batter and churro puff. Built Bar. Thank me later. All right. And next, before we get into this last segment of the show, I want to talk real quick about Locked On's production for the Mock Draft Special. The NFL draft begins on Thursday and the locked on's NFL mock draft special is here and it's bigger than ever. Follow along all 32 teams first pick in a six episode ultimate mock draft experience. Only locked on can deliver. All episodes are now available on locked on NFL draft on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Be sure to check them out. They do in a, an aggressive researching job and it's awesome check them out they deserve every bit of love 
All right. So, Kenton, wrapping up this last portion of talking about the Pac-9, they have a a chance to still mm-hmm. make some noise. Absolutely. And it's, it's been a little irritating because every time I speak about, well, this upcoming series, they should really get it done or it's do or die. They haven't been doing. And so, listen, guys, it's about 11.55 p.m. It's almost midnight. The, your back is against the wall, and you now have no more time to mess around. And I'm not pulling the plug. I'm not giving up. A lot of people are trending in that direction, but you won't find me doing so. This weekend is uh, it's an off weekend in terms of the ACC schedule for us. We played the Citadel at home, and that is undeniably, unquestionably, you have to sweep. And anything less than a sweep is a failure. And I'm very serious about that. If you win two out of three, that's a failure. The Citadel is an extremely inferior opponent. And while this, yes, it does not affect our ACC standings, it affects the win column, for one. That's more important than virtually anything else. And these would be, however many losses potentially to the Citadel, would be a very bad loss. Whether it's one, two, you pray to God it's not three it would be extremely detrimental to the resume. I think losing even one of these, it might put us on the wrong side of the bubble, even with some ACC play left to go. That's how bad a loss to the Citadel this upcoming weekend would be. And then after that, you have another midweek game against another inferior opponent against North Carolina A&T. All four of these games, the three this weekend and the one next Tuesday, are, are at home. So again... What more could you ask for? You have an inferior opponent at home, and you need to win. Unquestionably, you should be 4-0. In the words of Moneybag, yo, you got to protect the brand. This That's is right. a, This is a moment where the brand <laughs> has to be protected, okay? You cannot take a loss here because at the end of the day, your resume is the brand in this, in this instance, right? You got to take care of it. You have to make sure that you're in a position – so we've seen this before in C State baseball. We don't have to go to any other sport. We've seen it. If you're on the bubble and you give the, the committee a reason, you will be sitting at home. I as sure as the sun rises on the east and sets on the west, as sure as we can guarantee death and taxes, if NC State baseball is on the bubble, brothers, y'all will be at home. So do not give yourselves the op- or do not give the committee the power to do so. Again. Go win yourself an ACC chip, you know. You know, make sure we ain't got to worry about it. But if that's not possible, you still need to do all you can for the resume. You still need to do all you can in the regular season. You still need to go out there and snatch a team like this so early, early. Make it very clear in all three games. Hey, we appreciate y'all for coming out. You know, we're gonna be good hosts. We're gonna fix you up some. Some nice Carolina barbecue and all that good stuff. You know, we're going we gonna to do all those things for you, Citadel. I, I know the Citadel is where? South Carolina, right? South Carolina, yep. Yeah, I know the barbecue down there is a little different. Don't worry. We got you. We're going we gonna to get you some of, some of the best stuff we got up here. You know what I mean? And we in Central North Carolina, so we get you stuff from the east or the west, and then we're going to send you on your way, okay? That's what needs to happen here. You need to be gracious hosts, but whoop the wheels off them, and let that be clear from the jump in every game. Hey, y'all don't have a chance. And then when you get the lead, don't take your foot off any necks. Don't have that moment where, oh, we've got a lead, the hay's in the barn, boys. Until that last out, that hay is never in the barn. Keep running it up. And that's all I got that's to right. say about that. That's right. I mean, that that about sums it up. I, I don't know if I can even put it more uh, bluntly than you did there. So, For Kenton Gibbs and myself, that's going to do it for us for this Wednesday episode. Like I mentioned, and when we were coming in here, uh, if you could be so kind, throw us a like, throw us some comments on how you feel the Pac-9 season is going to shape out, and be sure to mash that subscribe button as well so you don't miss any of these episodes where we have a big recruit, a big commit, a big series. You get the picture. You don't want to miss what we're getting out there. This upcoming summer, we're going to be getting out some player interviews, we hope some more, uh, you know, interactive things for the people that listen to us. So we got a lot on the docket. Be sure that you are in here with us to make sure you see and hear all of it. So again, for Kenton Gibbs and myself, thanks for coming out. 
Uh, as always, go pack. Go pack. You are locked on NC State. Your daily podcast on the NC State Wolf Pack. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day.